Our first card is this one, using the counting sheep. It is just stinking cute. First thing we did was emboss a piece for the front. We have another piece for the front. <clears throat> we have our pieces for the card base and the inside and for a sentiment. What we need to die cut are three hats, two sheep, two clouds, a sun, and two balloons. So I will die cut those things and be right back. Okay, we got the pieces all die cut. We're gonna continue on do the rest of our stamping. What's here is the middle of the card and it's been scored here to, full, to create that pop-up in the middle. So we're going to work those score lines. And then what we want is for it to pop up in the, go in the middle of our card. So what we've got in our card is two sheep down here. So um, we're gonna stamp those sheep in black. Okay, we're going to put a little grass around our sheep, and this I'm doing with uh, evening evergreen. Okay, we also need some grass on the front of our card. Um, we'll be putting the sheep on here kind of like that. So let's put the grass like that. Okay, the only other thing we have is our sentiments. For the sentiments, I've used a stamp set that can only be obtained during celebration with, a, I think, a $250 order. I'm using happy birthday and hope this card makes you smile but a per you could easily use the um, sentiments from the counting sheep set. I'm stamping the sentiments here in evening evergreen. So I think that's all of our stamping. And then to color our sheep, I used um, the blends and I used a light smoky slate to color the sheep's faces, doing no special coloring here, just we just plain added some color. And then I'm using Smoky Slate Dark and we're going to do the hooves. And again, nothing fancy here. You could use whatever coloring means you have. And that's all we did for the sheep. For the balloons, I colored one in red, one in yellow. I colored the clouds blue and the sun yellow. And the hats, we used a variety of colors. And again, we did nothing fancy here, just threw some color on the die cuts.
I'm using light real red for this balloon. And let's do a little bit on the hats. And let's see, we'll add, make this hat yellow. And then I use balmy blue light for the rest of the hats. And for the clouds. Okay, now all we have to do is put our card together. On the inside of our card, we're going to have it fold up. I like to use glue, but you can use any adhesive you like. We're going to put glue on one side. We're going to take our card and have it centered here with that crease in the middle and we'll close the card. We'll give that a few seconds. We'll open up the card and put adhesive on the back part. And we'll close up the card. And Okay, so then we have a sheep to be added up here, and um, and you can see when you fold down, he ends up inside your card. Each of these sheep got a hat. So we'll stick a hat on each of those. And we gave this guy a balloon. Well, actually we gave him the yellow balloon. We'll save the red balloon for the front. And we can try to stick down this end of the balloon with a little bit of adhesive. And there's the inside of our card. Okay, so on the front, we're adding our embossed piece with some liquid glue. We're adding this green square right on top of that and this is evening evening evergreen cardstock kind of centering it from the top and the two sides okay so then we have this little sheet to go on the front we'll use some dimensionals to put him down We'll pop our red balloon into its hand here. We've got some clouds we can 
put wherever we want. And I just like put them there and there. And we're going to put a dimensional on that sun. Put it right up there. And we've got one more party hat. And let's get a little dimensional to help hold him up. I'm going to stick it right down here. And we'll put the hat over the top. And the last thing we have is the sentiment. And I just used a scissors to trim that. Apparently my scissors are sticky. And I don't want it quite this wide, so we're going to trim it. And I don't want it quite this long, so we're going to trim it. And we'll put that up on dimensionals. And that then is our count counting sheep birthday card. Our next card is a pinwheel card, and it is named that because it has the shape of a pinwheel. And meanwhile, it's you choose a side to be the front, and as you turn the card, it opens up into more So in a way, it's almost like a never-ending card. It's really not as hard to put together as it might look. This part that forms the square in the middle is made from a four and a quarter by a four and a quarter inch piece of DSP. You can use cardstock, but the DSP makes it flatter, and this will fit into a regular size envelope without too much popped up you can probably mail this for one stamp meanwhile it makes a great card for display okay so in your kit you have the square that forms the the middle of the card <clears throat> and it's scored at one two three and four which leaves a quarter inch gap here. So um, you start out by gluing that. I'm going to just put a little bit of adhesive on that flap and I'm going to fold this down over it. And so that gives you that square that is the base of your card. So then what you do is, with the rest of your pieces, you have four of these gray pieces that are four and a quarter by two and three quarters. And you glue one of those on each side of your, your middle piece. So you'd start by, uh, putting glue and then you would have that on and you have to go keep going the same direction. No, I actually have a card started here so I'm going to finish this one. I have folded and created our thing, put on the first one, put on the second one. And now we'll put on the third one. We'll just put some adhesive 
on this particular piece. And we're gonna butt this up to the outside. And you can rotate them around. And you'll see how they keep going the same direction. We started here, then here, and then here. And this is the one we just put on. And we have one more place and we'll put on this last piece. Okay, and that is the base of your card. It should look like that. You have your pieces that keep going around. The rest of the card is decoration. So in your packets, you have four pieces that are one and a half by four and four pieces that are two and a half by four. And you can just apply those to these panels that you have here. On my card, I kind of alternated a dark one with a black one, or with a dark side. And by the way, this paper is free with a $50 order um, through the end of September. And so then you just flip them on and we can go. And these really don't matter just a whole lot with this particular paper. If you had something more directional, perhaps you might want to plan it out. But anyway, you keep going around, putting on your, your papers, doesn't matter how. And it doesn't matter what adhesive you use, I just like my glue. Okay, so we've got most of them on here. You could be using DSP, that's all the same. You could just, I mean, the sky's the limit on what you can do with these. So there you have your card, all your pieces put on. And the rest is definitely just decoration. I have used um, the meadow dies to cut almost all of these pieces. You can decide how you want to use them. If you find this little piece, it is meant to go as a center to this flower. Every kit may not have exactly the same flowers, but I think you'll have more than you need to uh, do your, your card. Okay, these pieces were provided for sentiments. Um, I never actually used that one, but it was part of this die set, so I cut them well. You have butterflies, dragonflies, a little tag, and now I will just flip through my card that is complete so that you can see exactly what I've done with it. Um, I used an old set of, of sentiments, and I have God bless you, and meanwhile a lot of times I cut off the stems. On this one I put a little dab of ribbon. I don't believe you have ribbon in your kit. I also did some playing with coloring, adding colors to some of the white areas. I wasn't sure I liked it, so um, you know that would be an option. Meanwhile, these things, I simply um, glued them on, 
rather than pop them up so it wouldn't be so thick. You could also leave one of these areas or one of these um, labels blank for to write your message and sign your name and that is this card I'll go through it one more time but basically I just started laying things down um, it's a good idea to pick your sentiments before you put them on there And basically you can decide which one is the front of your card and have it folded like that when you put it in your envelope. And the rest is just a beautiful, simple card. So enjoy. Okay, our last cards here are these paper quilting cards. These cards are both the same, they just have different designs and can be put with almost any sentiment there is. In your packet, you should have the card bases and the layers for both of those cards. You should have the pattern piece, it's just a copy of a pattern hand-drawn on grid paper. You should have double-sided adhesive in two different sizes that should cover those patterns. And you should have the pieces. Like here you'll have, for this one, you'll have four full squares and eight half squares. For this one, you have a center of blue you have eight little red triangles, four of those white, and eight each of blue squares and white squares. So let's get going and I'll show you how to do these. Okay, one thing that is difficult with this paper that I have, and you can use any kind of paper. The lady I learned this from used glue. I think this is less messy, but I have trouble getting the back off. So I take a piece of scotch tape and put one on the front, one on the back, and then if I pull them apart, okay, this is just the backing piece. We don't need that. And this piece has the adhesive on it. And so we put it down basically to cover this design. We'll push it down and we will, we can then remove this backing, which has left the sticky on here. And okay, so then we have, you wanna start in the middle of a design. And basically, I'm gonna lay this here. It says to put these peach, pieces down here. You want to lay them just right on the line. Should cover pretty much the whole thing. Then we'll take a flowered one and we're going to butt it right up to there. You want to push it up. Well, easier said than done, huh? And you want to have those corners meet in the middle and you push it down. We can take our next flowered one or our peach one here and put it down. Then we have one more of these and you want to get the corner in the corner. And like you can see, I have lines showing here and not there. Um, if you wanted to be totally accurate, uh, it'd be better if you could see the exact same amount all over, but um, that isn't what we got and we can take care of that when we're done. So this one says purple. So we're gonna put a purple half triangle in there and we're gonna go around and you wanna butt these up so that there's no blank. We can cut off to even up on the outside, but you want your uh, every inside joining there to be as precise as possible. 
Okay, so then these are white ones. Now I have a little bit of a gap there. But I'm going to let it. We need another white one over here. Another white one over here. And we have room for two more purple ones. Okay, so that's how simple it was to piece that together. Once we're done, we're going to cut that out. We're going to square it up and run it through an embossing folder, and you end up with that. Okay, so on our next one, this one isn't going to be as hard to peel apart because it has their natural place here, so we won't use the scotch tape. And we want to put this down. We'll pick it up, leaving our adhesive on our paper. Now this one is a little bit harder. Accuracy matters, both yours and mine when I cut these pieces. So if you have pieces that don't look right when you put them down, it's best to take them out and trim them. Now I put down the square in the middle first. And then I'm gonna take down, take these red triangles and they need to butt up to that square with the corners touching. And then on each side, you'll stick one of these white triangles between. Now I have a little spot here that didn't cover real good. If it's bad, you pull your piece off and try again. Okay. Okay, we keep going here. We put down the next red ones. Putting these down over a grid makes it so much easier to, um, to have an accurate quilt block when you're done because you, you don't get off more than just a little bit anyway because you always have your lines and your grid to fall back on. I'm using our wonderful grid paper here and then I ran it through a photocopier. Okay, so then when we do our corner, it says white here and here. You wanna get that butted up squared with your red ones. And we can put a white in every corner while we got white. And then I'll switch to blue ones here. And one more white one out here. Okay, so on this one, you can tell that it left a whole lot there. I don't know if it's maybe not a big enough. Well, I'm thinking maybe the problem was this piece was not good. 
I'm going to try to stick it the other way. And I know it should be square, but I think it fits a little better that way. But until you press these down pretty good, you usually can remove a, a block or a little piece, either to cut a new and cut a new one or trim something off. If one overlaps another one somewhere, that can be resolved with the embossing folder at the end. Okay, so here I have the pieces down. And then what I wanna show you is how you square those up. We're gonna take and cut off this one edge, fairly straight here with the scissors. And then we're going to stick this in a trimmer now, a guillotine type trimmer works better, but see how un this edge is very uneven? And so we're going to take, and actually I took a fair amount off of there, but it evened up the edge. And we're going to do that on all four sides because no matter how good it looks, that really squares it up and gives you sharp, even edges. Now I'm actually cutting a fair amount off. Here's the one where we started. And it is pretty good. And so you can see I just, just cutting off a little bit. And then you can look at it and you can see how much better that looks already. Okay, then the rest of that, we then put through the embossing folder. And if you have the Subtles folder, it's what I used on this one, and it has like a vertical line. I don't know if you can see that. So we put it through, ran it, turned it, and ran it again, and ended up with a um, block that looked like that. And we did the same thing with our other blocks. Here's two samples. This one hasn't been trimmed up or, or embossed. This one we used the tin tile. On the sample card here we used um, a lattice folder. But then after you get this far, the cards are just simple to put together. You have your card base, you have your layer, for the front and some for the inside and put a greeting down below. And the same thing happens here on this one. You end up with layers and layers for the inside and room for a sentiment down there. So I hope you enjoy your paper quilting. I have fallen in love with it. I don't no, I just like doing it. So um, good luck with your card kits. Thank you.